and welcome to NCBI Labs. Good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome to another NCBI Labs live event, which brings up the live event number 42 in our series. This is JP Cork, which is today from the Labs team. I'm standing in for my colleague Jude Maher, and today I'm joined by our regular panelists, Daniel Dunn and Joe Lonergan. So I hope everyone listening in is managing to stay safe and well. It's over a year now since we recorded our very first live event during the country's first lockdown, and yet here we are a year later in another lockdown. Well, hopefully with the gradual easing of restrictions and continued vaccine rollout, we have some brighter times and days to look forward to. And as always, the labs team is here to help you stay up to date with the latest technology news and product releases for people with sight loss. So what do we have coming up for you in the show today? Well, in a short while, we're going to be taking a look back at some of the highlights from Apple's Spring Loaded event. It took place last Tuesday, the 20th of April, and it released, amongst other things, two new iPad Pros and the much anticipated Apple AirTags. Now, also announced during last Tuesday's event was iOS 14.5, which became available only last night, and which brings with it several new features and enhancements, including new Siri voices, an option to unlock the iPhone with Apple Watch while wearing a face mask and Apple's app tracking transparency. So lots of new developments from that event and joining us in a short while to help us go through all of them is David Nason, who is a member of the editorial team with Apple Viz and uh, it's a really excellent online resource for blind and low vision Apple product users. So we're going to be finding out a little bit about Apple Viz too. And after this discussion, Daniel is going to be taking us through some really helpful quick tips for Android users, including how we can use the Android's uh, phone side buttons for answering and ending calls, and how we can set up a phone to read caller names aloud. And finally this week, we'll be revealing the winner of our competition to win an Amazon Echo smart speaker. So lots to come in the show. And as you can tell as well, a nice balance of both Apple and uh, Android products too. As always, if you have any questions throughout the show, you can send an email to labs at ncbi.ie or you can post them directly in our Q&A panel in the live event and I'll make sure to get straight back to you. But to start off the show this week, I'd like to take a look back at some of the highlights from Apple's virtual spring loaded event that took place last Tuesday, the 20th of April. And joining us on the show to tell us more about this event is David Nason from the Apple Viz editorial team. So David, you're very welcome to the live event. Hi JP, thanks for having me. Great to have you on. David, before we go through some of your own highlights from Apple's event last week, I wonder could you start by telling us a bit about Apple Viz for those who may not be familiar with it? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Apple Viz is, it's a website, appleviz.com. Um, really, it's a resource for blind and low vision users of Apple products across the board, whether that's iPhone, iPad, Mac, watch, or the TV. So uh, you've got kind of thing, it's, I suppose I would say that the heart of it is the community because it's a, it's a worldwide kind of community of people who come together to help each other out. And that's kind of what's key to it. You've got the forum where you can post your questions, um, whether that's, you know, a very basic thing or you're an advanced user and you're you're looking to do something more advanced. You know, you've got the whole range of people there willing to help and happy to help. So the forum is really key to it. You've got resources like uh, guides, so getting started if it's your first iPhone or your first Mac and you want to know, OK, how do I even get started with this with things like voiceover or Zoom? You'll find guides on there that people create. Um, there's an app directory. So again, you might be wondering, you know, what good apps are there for this category? Or I've heard of this app, but is it accessible? You know, everyone's talking about this app, but is it accessible? People will post uh, that app into the app directory and give it ratings, and then you'll see comments on it. And podcasting is a big thing as well. So we would do um, regular kind of roundtables to discuss, say, Apple events and things like that, or interview people. Um, or as well, you know, demos again as well. So when new versions of iOS come out, that kind of thing, we do demos. And I suppose the other big thing we do is around, yeah, when new things come out. So we, as a team, we would be testing, you know, the beta versions of iOS yep. um, and macOS and so on, and yep. then kind of posting kind of what, when they come out. So on the day of release, we have loads of information available for people about what's mm. new. Um, in those as well. So that's kind of yeah, the, the key to it. And I Excellent. And one of the things I find, I, I bookmark the Apple uh, uh, web page myself. I just find it really helpful resource. But one of the things I find, David, strikes me is that 
they always you always seem to keep your finger on the pole, so to speak. So that Apple event, which I mentioned uh, last Tuesday, uh, it was probably within 24 hours. There was a, a full um, review on, on on the event itself, looking at some of the highlights. So it's kind of it's a really go to uh, site, I think I, I would find for for anyone who's interested in accessible technology relation to, to Apple products. So really, really good resource. I wonder, Dave, your, your own involvement in Apple Viz, could you tell us about when you joined the editorial team and what that role typically involves? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it was 2017 I joined. So Apple Viz has been around since 2010. So shortly after um, VoiceOver was launched on the iPhone in 2009. Yeah. Um, and I was a member for a long time, um, you know, just uh, um, taking part in the forums and so on. Yeah. And they put a posting up uh, saying they were they needed a couple of extra members for the editorial team. So I threw my hat in the ring. It was a bit like a job interview. It's an unpaid mm -hmm. position, I should say, the editorial team. <laughs> don't yeah. get paid anything. It's a purely voluntary role. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it was the summer of 2017. I think iOS 11 possibly was yeah. uh, in beta at the time. So that was, a, okay. yeah. the, I suppose the what we do, one part is moderating the website, which doesn't take a huge amount because thankfully we're a lovely community and there isn't a huge amount of um, problems on it. Yeah. Um, there is spam and things like that, but the software I think takes care of most of that. David Goodwin is our um, Guy based in England, he's uh, yeah. the guru behind the, the technology yeah. of the website. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we would make decisions as well about the running of the website or if people submit podcasts, we would listen to those podcasts and yeah. decide, OK, is that meeting the standards yes. needed yeah. and then editing it and getting it posted to the site. Yeah. Um, yeah. That bug tracking, so we would as a team so I will be running, you know, WWDC will be coming mm -hmm. up. I think you'll be talking about it That's later, nice. but yeah. they'll probably give us access to iOS 15, not just us, you know, developers generally, yeah. but we, we're on that program as well. So we'll get early access yeah. um, and yeah. people can join public betas, of course, as well. Um, yeah. But we will be running it all summer and tracking the bugs, reporting bugs to Apple, giving them as much information as we can. And then uh, so that we're in and trying out the new features and all that so that we're ready on the day of iOS 15 launching in September, we'll have a post up saying here's everything yeah. that's new. Here's the yeah. bugs. You make a decision if you want to go ahead and. <laughs> and yeah, 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 that's yeah, a yeah, big yeah. part of our role. Wow. And then okay. podcasting, I suppose, would be the other big thing. So okay. people who are familiar would know Thomas Donville does a huge number of demos and things like that. And then I do. Um, I do the Apple Viz Extra podcast, which is where yes. we kind of do the roundtable discussions and interviews and those kind of things. Yeah, one of the things I've found as well, David, it's an excellent resource for for people who are just very new to the iPhone and getting used to using VoiceOver the first time. Same with the Mac and, and Apple Watch. And very often I, I'm steering people towards uh, Apple Viz, the, the website, you know, the first time they, they have their first iPhone and they're familiarizing themselves with VoiceOver, for example, or the first Apple Watch. Uh, I wonder, could you give us uh, like the, the website? How, how can people access these resources? What, what's the website? Yeah, sure. So it's www.appleviz.com. So that's okay. A-P-P-L-E-V for Victor, I-S for Sugar. Yeah. Okay. com and that's where you find it or if you use a podcast app whatever your podcast app yep. is if you search for apple biz you'll find the podcast thread there as well and we're on twitter right. where you'll find links to right. we're just at apple biz on twitter so you'll find links as well yes. and on facebook okay. but the key place would be applebiz.com applebiz.com excellent there's a few few a few sources excellent um david as well as that i know you have your own youtube channel and uh, do you want to give it a mention there today and maybe go through some of the topics that you typically cover on it yeah, sure. It's yeah, it's something I've, I've I've dabbled in, as you know, over the years. Yeah. I kind of go through a little spurt of use of putting stuff up, <laughs> yeah, and then whenever, uh, whenever you find the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I what I try to do is that kind of demo kind of stuff. So that mm. stuff Thomas does mainly for AppleViz.com. I'm yeah. I, in the podcast feed. That kind of what's new um, or how to do X or Y, um, getting started guides, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, at the moment, everything I've done pretty much has been iOS um, related, yeah. but I actually am looking at kind of should it, you know, can I do some Mac and actually even some Android? I'm in the process okay. of kind of okay. learning, learning my way around Android a bit more as well. Very so good. Very good. maybe I can, I can do that as well. So Great. Well, yeah, nice. you can find that uh, YouTube.com. I think if you YouTube.com slash Dave Nason, I think Dave that Nason. finds so, it. Uh, and you can subscribe to your channel that way. 
Nice one. Uh, yeah, if you if you yeah. if you want to follow uh, to. And okay. you, whatever I get news stuff out, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Maybe we we'll have a conversation on to Apple's event uh, last week. It's the first Apple event, I believe, of 2021. Uh, it's aptly called, called Spring Loaded because there were quite a number of uh, products that were unveiled. How do, how do you think David stacked up against other Apple events in, in recent times? It was pretty good. Um, yeah. I suppose Spring tends to be the least mm. big of Apple's, for want of a better phrase, of Apple's events. So, you know, yeah. because you get WWDC in June where they do all of the new software, they show yeah. us all the new software coming. And then September, October, you get things like the iPhone and the watch. Yeah. So Spring tends to be a little bit more low-key, I guess, but I think it was quite good. And over the last year, obviously, with lockdown, they haven't had the in-person events where, that we were used to watching them on yeah. stage. So they've done these um, live kind of video, or probably pre-recorded, I should say, video um, yeah. events, and they're very, very slick. They're yeah. very fast-paced, yeah. but get the detail that you want. I think they've done an amazing job, actually, on those yeah. events as they yeah. go. Yeah. Um, one of the things itself is really good. Sorry, go ahead. It is. I was going to say, one of the, you're right. I, one of the things that struck me, I haven't watched it back uh, during the week, was I think in the first five, 10 minutes of the event, which lasts, I think, 60 minutes. I think the first five, 10 minutes, I think three products were unveiled. I mean, it was, yes. it was like bang, bang, bang. You know? It so really was. Yeah. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and um, they yeah. do audio description as well. So if you're watching it on something like an Apple TV or on your iPhone and you have audio description put on, turned on in your settings, you actually get uh, AD for these events now as well, which you ne didn't necessarily get with the old live ones, you know. Yeah, it's good good, good to know. And, and just, just focusing on, on, on the event last Tuesday, so what, what were for you, Dave, were the main highlights? There was quite a lot, I said, um, I think, uh, thrown out there really, wasn't there? Like, so... Mm. AirTags is probably the biggest, one of the big ones that will, has been rumored for probably two years plus, and people are starting to wonder, was it actually real at all? Um, yeah. <laughs> but then they, they finally turned up. So they're definitely a big a big talking point. The, yeah. um, the new iPad, I mean, if you're a regular everyday user of an iPad, the new iPad Pros probably aren't going to move the needle for you, but... Yeah. If you're a pro do using real pro software like it is amazing hardware the ipad yeah no it's yeah. incredible <laughs> like yeah. um, kind, of, kind of like it to a, a laptop isn't it almost it really respect is, wise. Yeah. yeah 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 it's a bit yeah. of work to do on the software but on the hardware yeah. side it's incredible yeah. like um yeah. and then the the imax is the first the imax sorry is the first mm. uh desktop mac to get the new apple Chips yeah, in the M1, M1 is so. the M1 chip. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might just go back to the air tags for a moment because I know I was discussing this with with Daniel and with, with Joe earlier on, and we were looking at some of the accessories that can be purchased <laughs> along with the air tags. Uh, Daniel, I think you, you were looking into this as well, but with, with the accessories. Yeah, the there's um, yeah. yeah, there's there's key key ring, um, there's letter key ring things that you can use for let's say attaching to to your keys, house keys, uh, or your you know, if you had a backpack or something like that, you could clip it. You could clip it onto the, the zip holder. Um, so there, there are some um, accessories coming out, and I'm sure as these devices kind of get, you know, get, get established in in the marketplace, that um, other vendors will start coming up with um, accessories for them as well. Uh, so it's, it, you know, it probably opens up a new um, a new revenue stream, I suppose, for, 100%. for 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 all these guys making bits. You know, just mm -hmm. just much like what the the cases that are, are when they come on stream you know the generic cases for for the latest iphones as they get released and whatnot so yeah it's quite it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of that but one thing that kind of caught my my eye and i thought it was a very good move um with the with the tags is the fact that to use a, a cr2032 battery and they're like i suppose they're the size of uh what maybe euro coin would it be I think it's even smaller. It's it's a watch battery essentially. I think the same. Yeah, the, yeah. It's, yeah. It's probably it's probably about the size of your kind. I think, and um, you know the fact that you can use or change these yourself. So you know, yeah. pop mm. into your local Mister Price or chemist or whatever, and mm. they're widely available. So mm. uh, that's nice to see that you know the batteries can be replaced by you know your high street your high street shop yeah. battery. And the accessories. Um, I thought it was yeah. funny though. I I decided to buy yeah. one air tag because just see what they're all about really to try yeah, them yeah. out and i looked and the apple's leather key ring was more expensive than the tag itself mm -hmm, so right. i didn't buy that one yeah. um 
<laughs> so I'm gonna wait for somebody's third party yeah, ones to come up. Yeah, soon. yeah. That was that was directly from Apple.com, was this? Uh, the, the, yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Okay. They do yeah. have a Belkin one for thirteen euro, I think, yeah. which is a lot, uh, a lot okay, cheaper, Joe, but it's not yeah. available yet. Uh, yeah. Hey David, how's it going? I'm Joe here. Hey Joe. Um, yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me. I suppose which um, <laughs> uh, supposed to have some accessories are more expensive than the actual product. But um, has there been much discussion about um, what blind people will use these, or vision impaired people even will use these for? Mm. Uh, as regards, I suppose obviously it'll be for the obvious things of finding finding products like your keys and um, a gym bag and and whatever you, you may want to use them for, but. Is there any word on people yeah. using them to find their front door or maybe even I've, putting them on a guide dog? Or yeah, that's my favourite one, Joe. I've heard is uh, people saying they're going to put them on their, on their guide dogs. Mm. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. 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 Is there any issues with that work? No, there issues, shouldn't. Issues with that working? Like, that should work, shouldn't it? it should yeah, there's no reason it shouldn't work. And um, another one people, someone, one of the guys was saying is on his Roomba, Roomba is that what they called? You know, the, the robot vacuum cleaner. Robot, yeah. Oh, yeah, it yeah. runs out of battery yeah. and he doesn't know yeah. where it is in the house. Mm. Now he'll be able to find it and not trip over it, you know. Yeah. So those kinds of things as well, because if you have an iPhone 11 or newer, so an iPhone 11 or 12 range basically, or the SE 2020, mm -hmm. you will get a, a, an extra feature on AirTags called precision finding. Mm -hmm. And this will allow you to use your, it basically uses your camera and various different um, the UI one, that's what's called the U1 chip, I think it's called, and it yeah. lets you find it very, very specifically. It'll actually guide you, so it's not just hearing a noise Excellent. from it. It'll that's actually really, guide really you. Yeah, it's a voice over, over, voice over will guide you right to the product. Just, yeah, just, it's that's amazing. Excellent. Like, if well, that's, we'll yeah. see. I'll see when we get my hands on it how amazing yeah. it is. But it looks yeah. amazing, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dave, can I ask, can you remember how much uh, one, one air tag is? I think they come in either individual uh, or packs of four, isn't it? So Yeah, so 35 euro for one, or I think it's 120, 120. 119. Four. Yeah. 119, yeah, for 119. four. And, and you get free engraving. <laughs> yeah, free oh, engraving. Right. Okay. I couldn't think of it and I wanted to engrave, so I left yeah, yeah, it does. Um, yeah, that yeah. leather case is thirty nine, yeah. but then the Belkin one is thirteen. So, or the, and if you go into Amazon, there'll be loads of. Yeah. Because you might, you know, that's one thing. If you go to one of their um, competitors in this area that's been around a long time is Tile, um, and they're a similar yes. price. Now, what they do is they sell you a keyring one, or they sell you a card version, wallet version, or whatever. So they have different versions of the Tile. Whereas what Apple have done is said, we'll just send, we'll just have one tag, and then you put that tag wherever. You, you know you want and buy accessories if you yeah. need one you know so you can yeah. get a loop that will like maybe tie onto a bag yeah. or you can get the key ring or whatever yeah. you know okay great yeah yeah uh, look, looking forward to, to to uh hearing more about those and i'll, I'll yeah. definitely be ordering some so myself there's another interest there's another interesting thing i read about them um you know obviously it's going through the the find my device phone or phone and app on the iPad or the iPhone, but if it does come in proximity of an Android user, it'll, mm. it'll actually tell them how to get back in contact with the owner. Um, it's scan it, I believe. If you, so if you yeah, find an AirTag, you can scan it with, uh, with an iPhone or an Android phone. Yeah, and it'll yeah, give okay. the details. Daniel is all sneaking in the Android stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, th th that's, that is actually a great feature, though. You know, it's, I mean, yeah, it's not and, just uh, uh, unique to iPhone. They have some anti stock and stuff um, mm. built in, so you, you don't have to worry too much about someone throwing it in your bag yeah. and or in, or in your wallet and, and find out where you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is yeah. interesting. Um, yeah, so look, I, I'm, I'm sure we're, we're uh, as you said, we're a kind of an inventive community and we'll find loads of different ways of using these to improve. Yeah. Uh, improve ways, improve, yeah. improve our independence and, and, and thinking, quality of life, you know. If I was in a bar or something, could I leave a tag in my jacket and then would I go to the bathroom and find my way back, <laughs> you know, yeah. using an air tag? There you go. I don't know if the bar is open up soon. I think I'll try it. You can try that one out, exactly. <laughs> or, if the, or if your cork gets stolen. Well, yeah. yeah. That's true, too. It's true. Or, or we yeah. just forget to bring our coat, as we sometimes mm. do. Mm. And, and battery life, guys, looking at about what, 12 months for a yep. typical battery life. Yeah, for air yep. tag, not too bad. OK. And again, it's it's user replaceable, which is yeah. great because some of these tags in the market now, you don't don't have that option. So it's just dead after yeah. 12 months. You either send it back or you throw it away, you know, so. Very good. Yeah. 
That's excellent. Yeah, that's very handy. So, yeah. very handy. Um, so we, we might go on to an, another big announcement. Was uh, the, the it was uh, iOS fourteen point five was was announced last week and it's been released. I think it was last night. Uh, we were in touch earlier, Dave, about that. Mm -hmm. I. I Installed this morning on my iPhone. It took a while actually. It took about maybe two quarters of an hour for the for the install to to, to finish. But it can be slow. Yeah, a lot of certainly a lot of lot of new features enhancements there in iOS uh, fourteen point five. I wonder, do you want to talk us through some of those, Dave? Yeah, I suppose the big the big three to me anyway that jumped out to me would be Siri voices, um, the new podcast app, and the unlocking your phone mm. with your watch. So. On the Siri side, you've got on the Amer US English, they've got two new voices, so they now have four Siri voices and they no longer call the Siri voices male or female. They're just called voice one, voice two, voice three, mm -hmm. voice four. And um, so there's two new ones and very kind of realistic sounding. You can use these for voiceover as well. But as always with Siri voices, sometimes they sound great when they're at a natural speed. But if you speed them up to the 60 70 percent you might find yeah. it's not a you might still prefer alex or whatever yeah. it is that you use yeah. but uh, they are there as an option to try and they do yeah they do sound really good i believe as well the two irish siri uh, voices have been enhanced further so they've got this new okay. neural engine i have to admit yeah. i'm struggling to hear a difference but mm -hmm. apple tell us they've got the yeah. new neural engine yeah. voices <laughs> i didn't notice any difference in it myself but um yeah, I might have to take another take have another listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Myra, isn't it the Irish one? Oh God, no. Myra. <laughs> no, the Siri voice thankfully is different to Moira. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Um, and then you talk about some of the other other features. Then so I think a big thing. Obviously, we've been we've been living with face masks for the last twelve months, yeah. and people will be very familiar. Then, if you're out and about and you have a Face ID iPhone, um, rather than a Touch ID one, mm. you try and unlock your phone and it can't recognize you because of the face mask, so then you end up having to type in your passcode. Mm -hmm. So now if you're wearing an Apple Watch, which is obviously unlocked itself, um, yeah. it will detect that you're wearing a mask and then it'll say, oh, he's wearing an Apple yeah. Watch though and he's right beside his phone. Yeah. So it yeah. lets you in, which That's is um, really cool. Yeah. That would be uh, very, very convenient. Yeah. It doesn't uh, work for Apple Pay, unfortunately. Um, mm -hmm. But I suppose you could use Apple Pay on the watch itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, that's a really good feature. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, very necessary after a year of luck. <laughs> it, it, it's a pity they took them nearly a year to do it, but it's yeah, um, exactly. We'll probably be wearing masks for a long time in the winter and so it. on. So it's, it's looking that way, isn't it? So uh, another feature I mentioned just in the introduction, David, was the app, Apple's app tracking transparency. I believe this is it lets you control which apps are allowed to track your activity across. Them. Yeah, so um, they introduced this as a very controversial move. Um, it's been in the media a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, Facebook are very unhappy with it because um, obviously they make a lot of their income through data. And uh, so you have the option to um, stop the likes of um, Facebook and other apps um, tracking tracking your um, your data. So you can go into privacy, um, you know, go into settings, then privacy, then um, tracking and turn that off. Uh, universally true true for all apps you know if you want to or um in in lots of cases now an app be, when when before you use it it will ask you do you want this app to track your data and you can say yes or no but um facebook's biggest argument i suppose is the, what they say is on behalf of smaller companies wh which use your data to advertise to you um this will render um facebook useless as an advertising tool for them so uh, they won't be able to advertise their products and uh, yeah. it will just make it harder for them in general and and that's mm. that's the main thing it'll mm. be better for the users that don't want to see unwanted ads but mm -hmm. um look a lot of these companies which rely on data to make their income it's, it's going yeah. to be a bad thing yeah I'm not convinced by Facebook's argument, though. I think I need Facebook are interested in Facebook. I don't yeah. think Facebook are yeah. interested in small companies. And I think yeah. there are ways to do online marketing in a way that respects people's privacy. Um, mm -hmm. I think Facebook have proved themselves not to be very trustworthy. That's my yeah. own personal yeah, opinion uh, and not the opinions yeah. of Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good, good point. A few, a few other announcements from, from the event last week. Um, uh, I think we'll cover some of the main things, but I know as well, 
as the two new iPad Pros, new iMac, um, and some of the, the iOS 14.5 announcement. I'll look at some other things as well, like the, there's another uh, a new color of uh, iPhone, isn't there? iPhone 12, yeah. iPhone 12 mini, iPhone. purple iPhone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It seems to be the thing because um, Samsung brought out a lovely, uh, I think they call theirs violet, but you know, so mm. very similar color on the, in the S21 okay. range, which uh, mm. I had my eye on, I have to admit as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah. This think, the purple iPhone looks quite nice. Yeah. yeah, I think they wanted to keep the iPhone on the radar as well. They didn't have anything else yeah. to yeah. announce yeah. the iPhones. They said, yeah. look, we have to remind people here, we still have iPhones, you know, so. Yeah. And like that, in previous yeah. years, they've had the, um, the product red has come out at this time of year, whereas yeah. this year there was a yeah. red one at launch. So I think that's partly it as well. And there's a, yeah. there was talk that purple was Steve Jobs' favorite color, oh. and this is the tenth anniversary as, of his death. So, oh, okay. but that might be just coincidence. But some some people okay. are putting two two and two together oh, okay. on that one as well. Yeah. Speaking of colors, there the, the new range of um, the IMAX uh, they have them in seven different colors now as well. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the green, the yellow, orange, and red, uh, purple, blue, and the standard silver. So mm. um, just a, a seen a photo of them there. So I was browsing online and the, you know, they, they actually look very, very slick in the different colors and the matching stands and the whole lot. It is cool. And it's funny because only a couple of months ago, Intel did some ads where they were mocking Apple for the lack of color. Mm. Right. Uh, so now they've come to town with all these. That's <laughs> <laughs> how they respond. <laughs> Yeah. There There's some people now who don't like the new uh, iPad, or sorry, iMacs. Uh, they, the front of it, some people seem to think, doesn't look very attractive, but I, it's always subjective, this uh, kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's it's much more compact, isn't it? It's like 50% more compact with the mm. previous version. Mm. It still has kind of a chin on it, I think. So most yeah. of it is kind of edge to edge screen, but it still has a chin on it. And I think some people don't like that the edges around the side are the bezels are white rather than black. But. Mm. As I say, subjective. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Another another announcement was the Apple TV. Uh, got its first upgrade, I think, since 2017. Mm -hmm. um, I think the the Siri remote got a redesign as well. Um, any thoughts on that, Dave? Um, the TV itself, the Apple TV itself, is very. It's not really a story there at all. It's just a slightly faster chip, from what I can tell. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It might allow some versions of HDR or video to work better or something. But yeah. essentially, I don't think <laughs> anyone is going out to buy a new Apple TV. Apple TV. Yeah. If they already have a 4K Apple TV, do you know. Mm. But I suppose it's just a speed bump. It's worth doing. Um, yeah. I think the Siri remote is the is the big story. The um, yeah. Because I know I hate the current one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know which way around it is. You're swiping things yeah. by mistake. So a nice. Uh, a nice uh, button remote would, would mm -hmm. definitely be better. I may buy one myself. Um, yeah. What I was surprised a bit disappointed in Apple with is that it's still very expensive. So you can go out and buy a Google TV, a Chromecast Google TV mm. for 69 euro. Yeah. You can buy a Fire yeah. Amazon Fire TV for yes. a similar price. Yes. And yet you're paying double or three times that for an yeah. Apple TV. And I don't yeah. think for us anyway, if you're not gaming especially, I don't yeah. think... There's a huge That's, argument for it. Yeah, um, that's a good point. That's actually, a very good Dave. point. Yeah, um, yeah. You can put Apple TV Plus on the Google TV as well. But look, we yeah. won't stray away from the Apple TV just yet mm. because it is a great Siri, device in its own it, right. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I just think Siri, there's room for a. A, a cheaper version that's like a, st a streaming stick is kind yeah. of what I'd like. Yeah, you can yeah. you can buy the Siri remote, though, can't you, for all their devices, as far as I, yeah. I I know. So that might be a, a good option for somebody that has the Apple TV already. A hundred percent. Yeah, I think I'll be doing that myself. I think now, and somebody may correct me, but as far as I'm aware, certainly last time I looked, the Siri function itself still doesn't work in Ireland. Um, I don't know why they have Siri on every other device, but they don't have it on the Apple TV in Ireland. It just says mm. not available. Mm. Um, I yeah. wish they'd sort that out. <laughs> well, that was actually uh, yeah. if, that's, if that's not sorted out, that will be a, be a yeah. good, uh, reason not yeah. to get. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I can certainly vouch the fact that I tried it about a month ago. It didn't work for me, Dave. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. It's a, good, it's a strange one. A very, yeah, very it's strange. A big issue, of course. Yeah. But and, if you're in uh, the ecosystem, though, I would say because if you got iPhone, iPad, all that kind of stuff, then the Apple TV can be great as well because yeah. you have the same kind of feeling, you know, the same things across and even your music and stuff will sync. And mm. if you want to use something like Apple Fitness Plus, you know, that works with the Apple TV. So yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Great. Um, I, I know, Dave, you've said that you've, you've gone ahead and ordered uh, the, the Air, an, an AirTag. Mm. Are most of these products now, from what you're aware of, are they available currently from, from Apple? Uh, 
No, at the moment, so the AirTag is available to order and Mm -hmm. they're starting to arrive this Friday the 30th. Mm -hmm. Um, The rest of the products, and uh, again, open to be correct, I believe the rest of the products we talked about are available to order from this Friday the 30th. Um, And they'll be arriving in the second half of May, I believe. Yeah, great. Okay, thanks. And I have to say, if you are in the market, even if this iPad Pro maybe isn't what you need, look at something like the iPad Air which is a really, really strong device, and it still works with the, the keyboard, the magic keyboard yeah. that folds yeah. in. I, that's a, an amazing device, I have to say. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, just, we, we briefly mentioned uh, WWDC uh, coming up in, in June, and, and uh, Apple Visits uh, involvement and collaboration uh, with Apple uh, with that. Um, I know going back two years ago, I know there was, there's a lot, like, in the last two years, a lot, lot of uh, new features, enhancements made. I think two years ago we saw things like dark mode. I think the accessibility uh, w- uh, options were placed higher up the settings hierarchy. I think they introduced some disability themed emojis. Last year, I think we saw voiceover recognition introduced, the enhanced magnifier app. Uh, we saw a backtop that was introduced. Any ideas of what we can expect this year heading in towards uh, WWDC in, in June, Dave? It's a funny one. We yeah. haven't heard many rumors this year. Mm. Now, yeah. on the mainstream side, the big thing last year was the new home screens that you could do widgets and you could delete mm-hmm. home screens and have yeah. the app library. Yeah. Um, I believe from what I've been able to read and what I think is necessary as well, if I'm honest, is I think iPad is going to be the, the bigger yeah. focus this year. I don't think iPhone mm. is going to get as much mm. New, as many new features. Um, but that said, on the accessibility front, they can always surprise us. So we didn't know Backtap was coming mm. or we didn't know right. screen recognition was coming last mm. year. Um, mm. So, yeah, I suppose the hope is there will be further enhancements. The voiceover has been getting better year on year. They're adding new features. So yeah. hopefully there'll be some yeah. new stuff. But yeah. what that will be, I don't know. It'd be interesting to hear the, from the guys what they think, what they'd like. <laughs> what we yeah, think. yeah, exactly, exactly. Do, do, do you, do you uh, use Backtap yourself, Dave, that, that, that feature yeah. on your phone? I you find do. it really yeah. useful. It's pretty for, good. I use it for Control Center and yeah. Notification Center because yeah. there are things that you, otherwise you have to reach up to the top of the screen to kind yeah. of get it. Um, yeah. So it's just a bit yeah. easier. And the ability to customize other gestures is something they brought in, yeah, I think, two years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. I use that a lot as well. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I kind of I do as much as I can so that I don't have to use two hands to use my phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe, you use that a bit yourself. I think, do you? um I have used it for different things and um, some things I, I found it, it it was useful for and then other times you might leave your phone down on the c- counter a little bit hard and it might access It'll the double activate. back tap. But then I found um, with, with a, a phone without the home key, actually the back tap is quite useful to get up the app switcher. You know, mm. I, I, that that's one useful one I found. Mm. Um, yeah, launching uh, Dictate or launching YouTube to launch, um, launching YouTube with voice control, that's quite useful as well for a triple back tap, that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and, and as Dave said, they're, that's two very good ideas, getting your control center or a notification center. Because mm-hmm. uh, I, I obviously hate using the phone with two hands as well. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, so any, anything you have to do with two hands, it is a great time saver to use the back tap mm-hmm. feature. Yeah. But be wary, be wary about certain things that you might, we'll say, um, if you had it to start up, the last uh, played radio station or something like that. Just be aware if you do shake it really heavily in your pocket or anything <laughs> like that, it can it can set off things like that. Mm-hmm. So be wary of what you do put on back tap. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a good it's a good yeah. feature and and it it's great to see those kind of innovations coming in because it, that, Apple seems to have a great accessibility team. They're they're always thinking, mm-hmm. you know. It's yeah, the sort yeah. of thing none of us probably would have ever thought of to request. Yeah, and true. It just appeared, yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And yeah. going back to AirTags there for a second, yeah. um, is it possible for, we'll say, to share AirTags with your family? Find my in my family, you know what I mean? So I suppose if you weren't at home and you had it on your remote control, we'll say, or something like that, and your wife wanted to find the AirTag, you know, um, that'd be interesting to know if that worked. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you link it with more than one Apple ID? Good point. I actually don't know the answer to that myself. Yeah, um, yeah, I wonder to... would it work through the family sharing. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I didn't maybe. I didn't see it announced, so I must check that one out. Because hmm. that's the other thing I was wondering, because obviously they got the anti-stalker mode, as you call it, uh, yeah. where it is <laughs> if somebody puts an air tag near you and then hmm. they're not around anymore, so they leave. 
it'll buzz you to say, hey, there's an air tag that's not yours near you, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's been following you around. So I don't know how persistent that is. If you leave your air tag at home, is it going to be bugging other people in your family, telling them that there's an air tag mm. nearby? Yeah, you know? yeah. So there's some yeah. of the things we don't know yet, I think, and we'll mm -hmm. find out when we get them. Mm -hmm. Probably, probably, yeah. probably um, been a feature there that, um, oh, let's say, you know, your brother's eye tag is in his room and you're sleeping across the hall or whatever, and your phone is hopping, um, just dismiss that particular that yeah, particular I know this one, I trust notifications this one, yeah. or something mm. like that and imagine yeah. that would be too hard for them to set up but if obviously if it's you know someone I shouldn't have on near you uh, for for long periods of time then and um, there's probably an option then yeah. to you know for that to be there's a merit in that notifying you I suppose through that yeah. they've, been, they've been speaking about air tags for the last t uh, two or three years so I suppose they have um <laughs> really, really gone through this and tested yeah. a lot of these, so we'll we'll see. Yeah. We'll see now in the next few see. weeks. There'll be a lot more feedback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah. You didn't get yours yet, David? Did you? No, they're not arriving till Friday. Oh, so, till Friday, yeah. 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 Mm. That'll be interesting. Um, so when it arrives, to see 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 what they're about and see how much good. Mm. Yeah. What kind of things would you have in mind for it now, David? When you do get when you do get it? I honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, that's why I only bought one. <laughs> it's funny, a lot of people have been really excited about these and they've been like, oh my God, I wish they'd release these. And I've been a bit more like, yeah, they sound interesting, but like, yeah. you know, I'm not going to get too excited about it. But um, mm. they do sound cool. I definitely, th I can definitely see how people will find loads of great uses for it, but I'm not quite sure what mine is yet. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Say, uh, say for a lot of people now, like um, key, key rings and. Key rings. Uh, the, the, the TV remote are definitely the first two in most people's list. Yeah, I'm thinking you know, even things the like remote the remote uh, on the back of the couch is, is, is definitely yeah, exactly. not yeah, a yeah. problem. <laughs> and especially with that precision aspect to it. But even yeah. things like maybe your luggage when you're traveling or mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, putting it into your yeah. backpack or whatever it might be, so you're not not losing that kind of stuff. I yeah, think. If you ever, if you ever get back imagine. to land in, land in Spain again next year, I know. I keep talking about these things like traveling and going to bars somewhere over stuff, France. Oh, I'm living in a dream world. <laughs> nice well that's great great to go through the highlights from, from last tuesday's apple event uh guys and uh dave thanks a lot for giving us an insight into how it went one more question uh, there yeah for, go, go ahead there uh, yeah. yeah yeah you yeah. just mentioned earlier about you know the um the beta testing i suppose of when uh ios 15 is coming on board um would you have a little bit more detail as well as how what, what you go through and um what, what you actually look at in that and uh you know maybe for for the listeners here today just you know, if they, if they could get involved or something like that. Yeah, I suppose there's a couple of different things you can do. So for us, so basically Apple on June 7th will be hoping, holding uh, WWDC and announcing all the software. And usually that day they will make mm. the iOS 15, of, as it will be this time, available to developers, to people with developer accounts. Mm. And um, we have access to one through through David on the on the site as well. We, have a develop, we use a developer account as well. Um, and we would then yeah download it some of the lads don't some guys some of the lads on the team say i don't want to it's too early i don't want to, something that will break you know potentially break my phone so mm -hmm. uh it comes with a health warning for sure some people you put it on a secondary device say their old iphone or something i sometimes just dive in and put it on my main phone and then you know if it's too bad i'll just take it off again for a while but it is possible to go back so it's not it thing. is yeah if you're willing to do, do, jump through some hoops um I'm kind of living a world where it's like ah, everything's in the cloud. Sure, you know it's fine, but um, it's sometimes it's not for the faint-hearted, especially the first couple of weeks. Um, and then yeah, we would just start using it and filing bugs. So Apple, when you have when you're running the beta, you have a feedback app installed on the phone, okay. and you just go in there and you just literally just put in the details of the bug you found, and they send it off. And we, as a team, then we document all the bugs that we're finding and then through the summer we're knocking them off and saying okay that one's been fixed that one's been fixed and when we get to release date then we have the list of bugs that, are, that we've found it's not comprehensive because we're a small team so there's a lot of other people out there doing the same thing we certainly wouldn't be taking a huge amount of credit but it definitely is good that we're able to do that um in terms of public beta testing usually around july apple will mm -hmm. open it up to the general public to beta test so I think you go to beta.apple.com, I think is the website when they announce the public beta and then everybody can get on it if they want to. And again, you'll then have that ability to get a pre-release version of the software. And so, uh, I suppose from, from the point of view then that um, teams like uh, yourselves, David, where you've kind of gone in as a developer, um, you know, you're going to you're going to find the fairly serious bugs. And by the time it goes to public beta, 
it's fairly smooth. Okay, it's not the polished product, but it's mm. fairly smooth, and you're you're getting, you know, you're getting the real clangers are gone yeah, out at some, that stage. Some years it's okay. So iOS 14 was pretty good. iOS 12 was pretty stable. 11 and 13 were hell. Like <laughs> 13 yeah. was horrendous. Mm. Even when it got I'm to in a September, there. it was quite horrendous. Never mind <laughs> June, you know. Yeah, I'm um, noticing a pattern there. 11, 13, and yeah, I know. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> 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 we're thinking it's not going to be a big update this year, so we probably won't have too many uh, problems. Yeah. Uh, I think Apple as well have after iOS 13, they actually um, changed their processes internally to try and reduce the kind of that kind of stuff. But you can get sometimes you'll just find, I don't know, a certain app that you, you could just find, I don't know, Audible just doesn't work anymore. You know what I mean? Right. That, if, so you have to be kind of willing to take those kind of risks with, with it uh, if okay. you're going to beta test. And that can even happen during the public time, you know what I mean? Okay. Because right. those yeah. developers are are not committed to supporting their app until the release version is out, you know? Yes. So I would say don't I would say don't be scared of the public beta, but also don't feel like you have to do it or that you should do it. Um, mm. And you know, do it knowing what what can happen. You know what I mean? That it can break things. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. I know. I know some more, um, people know who will be very cautious, and uh, even even when the actual release of iOS 15 to everybody comes out, that they'll they'll actually will hold off maybe for a couple of weeks and maybe wait till 15.1 or 15.2, which usually come hot in the heels of a major release and go for, even, go, go for it then. Even yeah. Scott on our team does sometimes has been running like an older version again, like it's still running like iOS 12 on one of his devices because he's heavily reliant on Braille and mm. there's been one or two Braille bugs that just have haven't been sorted fully so yeah. he's just wow. so these kind of things can happen yeah 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 okay. wow wow um just a few comments in there yeah um, thanks daniel while, while, while we're here um great to hear dave and um, loving apple viz and we're saying that the ios was released yesterday that come in there during our discussion um also another comment there says i used the mail irish siri vice and have not noticed any difference uh, I also use it on my Apple Watch and never did like Myra. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the greatest We're there. agreed there. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, nice one. That's great. Great to go through some of the, the highlights from, from that event. Anyway, guys, and uh, so what we have to look forward to in the next 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 while, different products be, uh, coming out. So, um, be interested to hear you get on with the air tags. Uh, Dave, yeah. So. Yes, we'll keep you posted. Yep. Um, now, we're going to move our conversation over from Apple to, to Android just to keep a balance. And we're going to check out some uh, quick tips that Daniel has uh, prepared for us today on uh, Android phones. Uh, so, Daniel, you might uh, go to some of the videos now that you've prepared. Uh, there's three uh, demo videos, and I believe the yep. first one is how to use the Android's uh, uh, Android phone side buttons for answering and ending calls, and how the phone can be set up to read uh, caller names aloud. So we're going to play that play that video now, just a moment, and then uh, we have a chat about it just after. Perfect. Welcome to Today BI Labs live event quick tip. And today's quick tip is how to use the Android phone's side buttons for answering and ending calls. So I'm just going to turn on our talkback feature here so we can listen along to the progress. Talk back on. Now with the talk back on, I am going to navigate to the phone app itself phone one ui home and we'll open phone that. edit box double tap and hold to long press editing options labels available used more options button so I've double it. tap to activate double tap and hold to long press i've swiped left there just to activate uh, to get to the more options uh, button and i'm going to double tap on that now to activate that button pop-up window Speed dial numbers in list. Double tap to activate. And I'm going to scroll down then to the settings. Open to keypad. Settings. D Call settings. Navigate up. Button. Out of list. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold to long press. And in here we are going to look for a section in this menu that says answering and ending calls so i'm just going to swipe right and get down to that and double tap on it to go into that menu item call set block number caller id off call, call background call alerts and ringtone 
answering and ending calls, 6 of 16. Double tap to activate. So I'll double tap to activate that menu now. Answering and ending calls. Navigate up, button, out of list. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold to long press. So in here we have a couple of options and um, we have four options really. One of the options that might be of interest to some of our listeners here today is to read caller names aloud. So it's a handy thing to have when your phone rings that um, if the person's in your contacts list and the phone number matches their name, it'll announce their name as the person who's calling you. So you can switch that on. Uh, we'll just navigate down a bit to do that. Answering. Read caller names aloud. Two of eight. In list. Eight items. So I'll double double tap to activate. To activate. Yep. Off. Read caller names aloud. Read caller names aloud. Off. Switch. Double tap to activate. So I've gone in there now and it just says um, it's currently off and to double tap on the switch to turn it on. On. Now just below that there are two um, with Bluetooth or headset only or you can have it always. So by default it's set to with Bluetooth or headset only. So you must go a little bit further in this menu to activate the always switch on this. So we'll do that right now. Tick. Not ticked. Always. Read. Ticked. That's ticked now, always. So anytime uh, somebody rings, it, the phone will read aloud their name or their number. Not tick on read caller. Navigate up button. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold to long press. So I've just gone back up the menu there and then gone on to come back out of the read caller names aloud menu. Answering and ending calls. So I'm going to go further down this menu now, past the read caller names aloud to um to the section we want which is um uh, which we're going to explain now in a second answering and ending call read caller names aloud on re answer automatically off and switch six of eight so here's double tap to activate uh, the volume up to answer so you can actually uh, answer calls by using the volume up button now hopefully this is on your model of android phone it's not on them all but um, a good proportion of the models out there will have this option. So just simply uh, double tap to put that switch on. So the volume up key then answers calls. And if we go a little bit further down. Press side key to end calls on switch seven of eight. Double tap to activate. And again, we have the side key, which is commonly known as also the power button to end calls, which is very handy. So for somebody who is struggling with uh, locating the green answer call or the red hang up call icons that come up during a call uh, these little side buttons can take uh, their place and make it much easier for you to use your phone in answering and ending calls and also you have the option to have the caller names read aloud as well so i hope this um these few tips have been of use to you and uh, try them out uh, hopefully, as I said, Android phones do differ a little bit from each other. Hopefully, these options are available to you on your phone. So for now, thanks for watching. So for now, thanks for watching. Right. Thanks very much for that uh, demo there, Daniel. Quick question, Daniel. Th that Those features, so you being, yep. able to, being able to use the Android side buttons to answer calls and uh, setting up the uh, read caller name allowed, are there any features that you can expect to receive on most Android phones or all Android phones or what are your... Um, yeah, um, it's, 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 it's very hard to commit an answer to say, and you'd love yeah. to say that it's available yeah. on all Android phones, but unfortunately it can be down to some manufacturers. Um, now for that particular um, video there, I was using the uh, Samsung A71 phone, and um, obviously they're on that, but I would presume it's across a lot of the newer, the newer models that are out there. Uh, some of the older models just might not depend on the manufacturer. And again, those uh, those fe those features uh, showed in the menu. It might be in subtly yeah. different places, but um, yeah. you might be able to search your settings. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, if you go into your settings apps on all Android phones. You do have a search feature yeah. for a particular setting. Yeah. Uh, you know that you could um, put in. Um, you know, answering ending calls and see has has those features been enabled yeah. on your phone? Yeah, uh, I'd say but, as well because you can get with the, one of the beauties of Android is you can download different 
you could download a different phone app. So if you find out that mm -hmm. yours doesn't do it, you may be able to get a, go into the Play Store and get a different phone app mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. may enable it. Yeah, that's definitely a, a, an option as well, David. Yeah. Um, okay. It's good. It's a really handy, handy tip. We might just go straight on to the, to the next one now, which I believe is how, how we can space out icons uh, on yeah. the home screen of an Android app for, for easier, easier viewing. So we're going to play that video now for you very shortly. I'll have a chat about it afterwards. Hello and thank you on the iLabs live event. And um, for today's quick tip, we are going to take a look at how to space out the icons on the home screen of your Android phone. So I'm going to open the settings app. And from there, we are going to look for the home screen. And on this Samsung phone, it's located down below the display wallpaper and themes option. So we go straight for home screen. And in here we are presented with a few options so we can choose our home screen layout um, to have the home icons and the apps screen or you can have it just as a home screen but most importantly what we are looking for in here is the home grid home screen grid size the apps screen grid size and the folder uh, screen grid size so we'll go into each of these and we'll take a look at what they do so we'll go into the home screen grid and straight away it kind of brings you back to an overview of your Android home screen. And at the bottom then you have the options to have uh, five uh, icons down by five icons across. Or you can go for five icons down by six icons across. But for ourselves here today we might like to space those icons out a little bit more and have them slightly bigger on screen so four by five which is the far left option and when we do that we notice that the size of our icons increase now on the home screen um, and there's less clutter there as well too so we can save that now and uh, now we are automatically returned back to our home screen and as you can see the text has got slightly bigger under each app but most importantly, the app icons are now a lot bigger. So we'll return to our settings menu again and we'll take a look at the further options. So again, we go back down to our home screen. Um, we now have our home screen grid and our app screen grid set at 4.5. Now the app screen uh, grid is the very bottom right icon here on the phone it has nine dots inside a gray icon. And when we tap on that, again, we see all our icons in here are at the similar size of the home screen. However, if you did not want to change those uh, icons, you can override that by going into the app screen grid and choosing the more apps again. So you can flick between those to see how they take effect within the apps screen grid. Also in here, we have in our home screen layout uh, we can lock our home screen layout by s turning on the switch um, what that does is it prevents accidental movement of the icons on the home screen sometimes if you kind of press for a bit too long on an icon or you accidentally move an icon in on top of another it can group them into folders it can be a little bit confusing and annoying for that to happen there's also another option here to have new apps added to the home screen as they are installed. So if you add a new app from the Play Store, its icon will automatically get added to the home screen. In addition, we have down here app icon badges and you can turn that on or off. What that means is if you have a notification, let's say from WhatsApp or from Facebook or from Messenger, a little orange uh, number comes up, a little orange ball with a white number comes up. Just to the top left of the icon indicating that there are notifications associated with the app if you find that a little bit annoying you can just switch that off and also there is another option here that might be useful for some folk and that is to swipe down for the notification panel anywhere on the home screen traditionally you would have to swipe down from the very top of the phone to get to your notification panel but there is an option here to swipe down anywhere on the home screen to access that panel so we'll just take a quick look at that now and i'm just going to swipe down anywhere in the middle and there we've got our notifications so 
that's today's quick tips on the home screen on Android phones. And thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, you can get in contact with your local NCBI trainer to go through these. You can get in contact with your local NCBI trainer to go through these options and more. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much for that one there, Daniel. Another yeah. uh, great, really handy, quick tip. Probably very useful for someone who is low vision. I would say that one to, to space out the icons on the home screen. Absolutely, and it's probably one of the reasons there it didn't have yeah. the uh, talkback feature talk on, on that yeah. particular one because it would yeah. generally be of only you know only a benefit for uh, somebody with low vision. Mm -hmm. uh, I would it might come in actually handy if if your phone is kind of set to have few fewer icons on the home screen for somebody who is a talkback user that they could actually increase the icons on the screen up to the five mm -hmm. by six. That way you wouldn't have to yeah. flick between screens so much. Um, yes. you, know, if, if, you know, if you have several pages of, of apps yeah. on, uh, say if you're scrolling across. Oh, that's a good, good, good idea for a diff different way of, of using that feature. Yeah. Okay, okay, excellent. Uh, I believe it, w one more video to, to, to play for us here, Daniel. So um, this is to do with restoring the navigation bar uh, on, on the phone. So we can do this to show, for example, the home button, the back button and apps overview button. Now I remember this, this used to be, that navigation bar used to be on, on Android phones and I'm going back a number of years and I used to find it very handy, but I know it's, it, it's gone now, but there is a way of restoring it, which I think you're gonna go through with us now. Hello and today we're going to look at how to enable the navigation bar and a lot of the new Android phones out there uh, have done away with the navigation bar at the bottom of the phone which is your home button, your back button or show all open apps button. So for some people this can be quite annoying because it means learning new gestures such as swiping up from the bottom uh to you know to get into all open apps or to change between apps and things like that so if you are uh, frustrated by the layout on a new phone and you want the old navigation bar back this is what you've got to do so first of all we are going to go for our settings app and in here we are going to scroll down until we get to display uh, we tap on that to open the display. Now I'm using a Samsung phone, so this might be slightly different on some other Android phones, but uh, these guides should be generally good enough to get you to where we need to get. And what we're looking for in here is quite a bit down uh, the display menu is an option called navigation bar. And when we go in here, it will give us a couple of options. Uh, so we can have our familiar buttons or we can have swipe gestures. Now, on many of the new phones, uh, swipe gestures is the default one. So um, if you want to get back your familiar back button, home button, and show all open apps button, we just select the buttons. And what will happen then is we get our um, button order option at the bottom, and you can have it that the back button is on the left, or the back button is on the right. Uh, basically, we just swap around the all apps button or the back button. Some people might like the back button on the very bottom left. Uh, others might like it uh, towards the bottom right. So I have enabled that there. And as you can see on screen, we've got our navigation bar back. And also in the bottom right, I have my accessibility options menu there as well, which is handy for um, applications like select to speak or talk back quick access to those. So that's today's quick tip on how to get your navigation bar back on your Android phone. And when you're happy with that, just simply hit the home button or there. So thank you very much for watching. And don't forget, if you want any further assistance with this or any pieces we feature on our live events, do get in contact with your local NCBI trainer. Thank you. Local NCBI trainer. Thank you. Thanks very much for that, Donald there, Daniel. Um, why do you think they stopped showing the, the navigation bar de by default on Android phones, Daniel? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> now, this is merely my opinion. Mm. <laughs> I think, um, you know, you, you have uh, Apple and Android, like they're closely watching each other's developments. And um, 
Apple brought out a, a range of iPads and iPhones mm. and they've done away with the physical home. But yeah. then much to the dismay of many, many good people, good Apple fans out there as well. <laughs> and I suppose uh, in a sense then that, um, the, you know, the swipe up for, for the iPads and, and um, I, newer iPhones came into play. So yeah it's android android i suppose mm -hmm. copied them uh in mm -hmm. in that sense and well manufacturers i suppose doing mm -hmm. away with the, the physical yeah. home buttons as well they thought, yeah. it, they thought it was good yeah but um it's good to know that on most android models um you can get back that navigation bar you know i know it's not the physical home button that we all love mm -hmm. um you know so, so much um uh, but it is it is possible to get, get it at least back that's on screen that you have your app overview, you have your back button, and yeah. obviously the little accessibility button, which I believe a lot more people are getting used to and using now with uh, select to speak and things like that as well. Yeah. Okay. I suppose, Daniel, with the rise of video content in the last few years, um, they mm. want to use the maximum amount of screen for videos yeah. and stuff like that. That's, that's, that's what I think I, it is as well. It's just it is, yeah. maximizing mm. the screen maximizing size. Screen. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Um, and there's like so many the, gestures you know, with as well. The camera integrated into, into the, the camera is integrated now in on, on the screen as opposed to being in part of the bezel at the top of the phones and things like that. So yeah, 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 definitely. It's yeah, it's, it's all about going. screen size. Yeah, great. So Daniel, thanks a lot for taking us through those really helpful quick tips uh, on Android and um, it's great now so we will be all make all those videos will be available on, on YouTube after today's live event and Daniel might stick around for the next uh, piece as well to help with our tech help so we had a question that came in from a listener during the week which is as follows uh, I'm a JAWS user with a Windows 10 laptop without access mm -hmm. to MS Outlook are there keyboard shortcuts I can use with the Windows 10 mail app that will work well with JAWS yeah, there is, um, I guess, um, I'm just bringing them up here, sorry now. Um, the, the, the Outlook, if anybody has used Outlook Express and things like that in the past, um, you're going to you're gonna find maybe a lot of the, the keyboard shortcuts are quite similar. Um, I had a list of them here now, and um, just give me a second here and I'll bring them up here. Mm. Um, like your, your control and enter, um to send to send an email um is, is a yep, popular one same. Yeah. yeah and just as well i want to maybe point out something on windows 10 that's not a keyboard shortcut at the minute but um your when you go to install if you link your google account um in into windows into windows mail, windows windows mail, 10 mail yeah yeah um that you might have a little bit of difficulty in getting the you know the submit button for the password and you know after entering in to pr proceed after entering in the actual email address so uh, that is a little bug i've ca i've come across um so just yeah. just to be aware of that if you are going to delve in and try out this um yeah. this windows 10 app now it is getting yeah. better to have improved it a good bit yeah. so just i suppose while you're in the while you're in the app itself like um if you want to if you want to go to the you know go to the inbox uh, it's control shift and i um, if you want to search for search your email, it's Control and E. Um, you also the the zoom features work on it, so your Control and Plus and Control and Minus will kind of zoom up the size of the app itself. Um, if you're in an email, you're reading it and you want to reply to that, it's Control and R, so very similar to your uh, Outlook. Reply to all, Shift uh, Shift Control and R, so it replies to all in a in a message. Like if there was multiple recipients and you want to get back to everybody, forward an email, uh, Control and F, and create a new message, Control and N. So they're basically carbon copies of um, of Outlook. Uh, add an attachment Alt and I, and uh, let's say Control and Enter or Alt and S will send send a mail after composing it and delete a message or a conversation. Your Control and D will do that. Okay. So that's um, that's some of them. If you want to mark an email as read, Control and Q. Um, that's another one that might be might be used sometimes. Okay. Uh, switch to Outbox, Control Shift O for your Outbox. Um, so and then if you want to move between the regions of the app, this is an important one. Um, your F6 key, so you can kind of jump between the message pane, the the mail pane. Or the folders pane, you can use yeah. your F6 to navigate around there like that. 
Okay, great. Can you share some of the popular ones. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Thanks for going through those. Yeah. I think from what I've heard as well, there's been a lot of improvements made to the Mail app and Windows 10 over the last number of years to make it more compatible yeah. with you know, the screen reader, JAWS, NVDA or Narrator, depending on what yeah. someone is using. So great, great another, to be Another good thing to do is just yeah. keep, keep, an eye on the, keep an eye on the Windows Store. Uh, go into the Windows Store and just look for updates in there and you'll find that sometimes your, your mail and calendar, which is a bundled app, um, we'll mm. we'll have updates there that it just doesn't they don't seem to pr come down through the standard Windows updates. Um, it, the updates of the actual Windows apps that you can install from the Microsoft Store, yeah. you have to go into the app and go to the updates there. So yeah. it might be just worth every yeah. month or so. Just take a little quick trip yeah. in there, see what needs to be updated and update them nice. all. Great, that's good to note. Thanks a lot, Daniel. Now, moving on. Um, Last week, we, we announced the, that we had the 50th um, anniversary of our technology news that our 50th edition went out. We gave readers a chance to win an Amazon Echo smart speaker. And having pulled one of the names out of the hat, we'd like to congratulate Tony Scanlon from Drimna in Dublin for winning the uh, competition. So well done, Tony. And uh, yep, Amazon Echo smart speaker is, is making its way to you now. Great, so we're nearly uh, finished today with our, with our live event. Uh, just before we go, uh, a few things uh, just to, to run through. Uh, just as a reminder, if you require any technology support from the labs team, you can contact our help desk on 1850 92 or you can send us an email to labs at ncbi.ae or to avail the wider services from NCBI, you can call us on 1850 33 43 53 or you can email info at ncbi.ie. To make a donation to NCBI, to help keep our services and live events going, you can visit our donate.ncbi.ie webpage. Um, also this week, as discussed in previous live events, we'd like to point out that the labs team are currently in the process of building the NCBI Smart Hub. So as a reminder, the Smart Hub will essentially be a way of availing of NCBI services to an Amazon Echo or Google Home Smart Speaker. So just like the one won by Tony a moment ago. And when it's available, the Smart Hub will also provide information, eye conditions, allow users to make appointments or even speak with staff using their Smart Speaker. So at the moment, we're looking for testers to help out with the development of the NCBI Smart Hub and provide feedback. So if you're interested in this, you can just send us an email to smarthub at ncbi.ie and would really like to hear from you. So we, if you want to get involved in, in that development. Yeah, we're looking forward to that one. So what's coming up in future live events? Well, we have lots of interesting things coming up that we'll be discussing in the next few weeks, including the new voice guidance accessibility feature that's being released by Sky Ireland at the moment on the SkyQ box, and that will be covering then on the 11th of May, our next live event in two weeks' time. We'll actually be joined by David Nason on that, Joe, so we'll be back with us then. Um, so really, for, really look forward to hearing about that development. We'll also be finding out about the official opening of the new Centre of Excellence in Tala and the different technology that's available, that's going to be made available for demonstrations and, and assessments there. So all of this to come and more. I'd like to point out that our next live event will be taking place on Tuesday, the 11th of May. So that means there'll be no live event taking place next Monday after the May bank holiday weekend. As a reminder, if you want to stay up to date with the latest uh, technology news and know what's coming up in future live events, you can visit our website ncbi.ie or email labs at ncbi to subscribe to our NCBI technology newsletter. So all that's left for me to do today is to thank our panel of Daniel and Joe, our guest speaker, David Nason, and of course, everyone for listening in as well. So take care, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the week. And we look forward to welcoming you back in two weeks time for the next NCBA Labs live event.